But in the world of cricket, England trail India 2-1 in the series. They go into the fourth test on this uh, controversial surface at the JSKA Stadium in Ranchi in India with it all to do. Uh, Talk sports commentator Neil Manthorpe joins Simon and myself in here. The the surface is getting a lot uh, of uh, controversy attached to it. Neil, why is that? Well... Um, it looks like India have done a little bit of uh, dice rolling. Um, for the first three test matches, they've uh, gone with pretty fair, evenly balanced uh, pitches. But you can never be certain because groundsmen, however they, you would hope that uh, they can be instructed, are human beings and they treat their grounds very, very um, preciously. You know, they, they're like young children to them. So it may just be that uh, he's... He watered it two days before, which is very unusual, which suggests that it was too dry. So he just he might have had a bad week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed Stokes was asked yesterday, what do you think of the surface? And he said, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And didn't say much more than that. It is very, it is very dry. See, the, the problem with watering a surface two days before a game or two and a half days before a game in India is that you can't water it too much, obviously, because then it becomes waterlogged. It's basically clay. You can only water the surface, and then you leave that in the sun, it dries, it becomes crispy. Um, and and that can, makes life really interesting. It means it spins from from day one. So it's interesting that uh, England have uh, left out their biggest spinner of the ball, Rian Ahmed, and brought in Shoaib Bashir, taken out the leg spinner, brought in the off spinner. So I mean, Simon's going to chip in in this because you want your England to do well and level Indeed. up the series two two. Um, uh, many observers are saying Stokes. Do we need to see Stokes bowling to give England the best chance? Um, where do you, well, where do you well, stand uh, that? As far as the balance of the team, uh, absolutely makes a massive difference. I mean, it's just such a Ben Stokes story, isn't it? He was categorical before the tour began that he would not be bowling, that he'd be building up his workloads with a view to bowling in the English summer against Sri Lanka and the West Indies. And he's been bowling and bowling. <laughs> and it must be very frustrating for him as a captain in the prime all rounder, knowing that his team is unbalanced without his contribution with the ball. Um, and obviously uh, his, his promise to his surgeon... Um, which which he he said I promise I won't but I promise so he's obviously made a phone call and said you know would it be alright because it's an emergency we're two one down and you know how about just six overs a day six or eight right and that and that could make the difference yeah is there anything this guy can do uh, <laughs> pretty much not draw uh, I was interested at nine to one for the draw it might as well be ninety to one. For the, for the against the draw, I think because Ben Stokes doesn't do draws off the table, off the table. No. See, I like that. You you must love that. Yeah, well, it's a Brendan McCullum mentality, isn't it? Which has been engendered into Ben Stokes, and he's leapt, leapt upon it. Are you surprised? And there was a massive pile on from very educated voices, Neil, about England's first Test result, and then the expectation of what was going to happen in the rest of the series. And all of a sudden, and Michael Atherton wrote an article saying this is now set up for England to win this series. And the polar opposite has applied. Are you surprised at what's happened post the first test? I'm, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, you, you're talking about changing almost exactly 150 years of Test cricket um, history and the wisdom, patterns yeah. of yeah. yeah. And you, you're talking about changing that perception in in two, the course of two years. So um, you've got people saying. I mean. Joe Root played the reverse scoop. He'd scored 70 runs for one dismissal mm. playing the reverse scoop, and he did it in the first over of a test match against New Zealand just over a year ago, yeah. in the first over or of a day's play. And a McCallum message would be go and do it again, wouldn't it? If he gets out for it, go and yeah, do it again. Well, no, do whatever you like. Yeah. If you think that's the right time to do it. But there are some things about test cricket that you can't change, yeah. and that's the hardness of the new ball, yeah. the freshness of the number one bowler in the world. It happens to be Jasper at Boomer. He's in his first spell. He's bowling his second over. That's when all of the danger signs... That's when batting is at its most difficult. So it probably wasn't prudent to play the reverse scoop then. But, as I said, he scored 70... He was averaging 70 in Test cricket playing the shot. Yeah. Um, and and so it's it's disappointing when you when you see the same people who wrote a year ago, it was the most exhilarating batting Correct, you'll ever yeah. see in a Test match. Joe yeah. Root has redefined the... And then a year later, to saying it was the stupidest shot. The point shot I was him. quoting is I read the piece that McCallum had said about him getting out to reverse sweep because he expects him to go back in the next innings and play the same shot again because that's the, me- the, the methodology that he wants to deploy. Just use the right time to use it, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Just identify the right time. That's it. I mean, you know, after day two in the in the Rajkot test match, England were 207 for two, trailing by 230 still. But Ashwin had gone home. Um, he was, the, you know, the number one spinner in the world. So the India were a bowler down. It was the, it was Jasprit Bumrah was the number one bowler in the Eyes world. He's got a hard, yeah. hard 
get some overs into yeah. their legs, see out that danger period, and then you can go mad. Of course, uh, whether you guys like it or not, India have got the cigars out because <laughs> Boomer's getting a rest. He's not bothering this time around, is he? <laughs> uh, well, I think that's also a reason to believe that India have rolled the dice a little bit. You know, that if you if you prepare a really result orientated pitch then um you you sort of narrow the gap between the the teams in a in a sense and and Stokes won't mind that i mean notice that his comments about the pitch have, have not been derogatory or or, or critical mm -hmm. Um, I think he's actually more excited yeah, than, yeah. than disappointed. Yeah. I mean, it, it, he put him in a in a in a casino type situation, and yeah. I think he said all he's in, yeah. It's yeah. all in, yeah. 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 So who wins it, Neil? Um, well, Come on. I, <laughs> I think India will win it, uh, but it's going to be really exciting, and you know? it's going to move incredibly quickly. There won't be any of those. Uh, um, attritional sessions that we associate with test cricket. Mind you, we haven't had any for two years, so mm -hmm. that's pretty easy, easy okay. to predict. The fourth test from Ranchi. Neil, uh, the voice of cricket here at Talk Sports, will be on the commentary uh, team for that, of course. And uh, England go into it, trailing 2 1 uh, in the series. Neil Manthorpe for the moment. Thank you so much. Stick with us. Spencer Oliver joining us from 12. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.